Hi. Hello. Welcome back. Thank you. How are you? Doing good. Happy to see you. I'm happy to see you too. How long has it been since I've seen you? Probably a decade. <laughs> okay, work. When I was first writing about you, like I think eight years ago, yeah. you were like emerging artist vibes and coming up, and now here you are, and you have worked with Solange and such as. How yeah. was that project? She's kind of just a sonic architect, so right. it was very effortless working with her. It inspired me to resolve some of my own things that I was working on at the same time. What did it encourage you to resolve? I call it the Saturn return thing, when you're talking about coming back to your original form at a certain age, just right. basically finding peace with certain things. Yeah. And so circularity was my obsession with that conversation. And then yeah. she, you know, she was talking about the black rodeo and I was thinking about architectural spaces that involve spectatorship around these things and yeah. the circle. Right now we are at Pioneer Works in my studio where I am doing a lot of the 3D printing for my wall pieces that I'm kind of installing around a black box theater that will be projecting my feature length animation series Birds in Paradise. Yes. Yeah. So something I've been working on since 2015. For people that don't know about your work, it has so many manifestations. First of all, you have this digital other world that is based on your own visual library and some of your mother's sketches um, made 3D, yeah. sculptural works, your own performance, yeah. your body is sculpture. How has your work changed since then? Oh, it has become far more collaborative. I kind of got more stabilized in New York City and got and immersed myself in the queer population in all those safe spaces. And I carried a green screen in my book bag to yeah. California, the Standard, or Fire Island, yeah. and basically put anybody and their grandmother on it to gesticulate to my choreography. And the right. way I was collecting bodies as the new archive, I still have the same philosophies about how I make work. There's nothing off limits as a material. Not only am I laying my dick out on the ground right. for everyone to observe and clap at or unclap at, but it's vulnerable, it's what I'm used to, and that's what I thrive on, it's when I feel like I'm surviving. You're like crowdsourcing your therapy though, in a way, yeah, too. Like, it, it is vulnerable, but it's like, you're like, all right, everyone, today we're going to work through <laughs> my apprehensive love that in, so in this way. One of the things that uh, is, is very present in your work now is collaboration, that tension between the solo producer and the collaborator. Talk about that for a moment. Both shows stemmed from a conceptual album I made with Nick Weiss. Yeah. We would spend eight hours a day for two years Years, yeah. Turning my mother's bare cassette tapes of her clapping her thigh like a metronome or like, yeah. a, like someone singing a folk song on a porch about yeah. their adversary yeah. and trying to wash that pain out. And she wrote a lot of poignant lyrics in the mental hospital and at home. When I was a kid, I was embarrassed by it. I was like, my friends coming over to play Street Fighter and my mom was like, sister girl. And I'm like, uh, ignore yeah. it. Yeah. Ignore it. And Turn I'm, up the volume. <laughs> so I basically repurposed those acapellas into electronic dance music and trip hop record that kind of spans all genres. Ever since I was a 15 year old, I've kind of been drawing myself in the composition of Doubting Thomas, yeah. where Jesus is resurrected and his wound is just laying out. St. Thomas is like, that's not real. And the allegory is an allegory of skepticism. I thought I had some like queer, transgressive kind of relationship with the painting. Right. And I was like, well, that's kind of cheesy and expected. Yeah, you're like, like, this I is was... just about penetration. I know. Uh, yeah. Another thing about penetration. I know, I know. Like when I was 12, I had cancer and I played video games for two years uh, with chemo. Like, yeah. so 32 bit gaming aesthetic was kind of like, an escapist space for my own personal trauma. So my right. whole aesthetic is kind of designed around it. After I finished cancer, I always had the skepticism of my own mortality and I left marks behind to kind of remind myself that I exist. Curiosity is like an infection. Yeah. And sometimes you have to repeat the same curiosity several times until you lance the boil of the idea.